This is the Lulzbot Taz 6, and it's a workhorse of a machine. I've had it for years. There's always been, I considered to be not necessarily a fatal flaw, but an incredibly poor design decision for what I need to use it for. Finally, I'm able to rectify that thanks to a model I found on Thingiverse. So let's get to it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. There you are, welcome back. First, a little history for you. This is the Taz 6 from Lulzbot. The Lulzbot of before. The Lulzbot where I dealt with, uh, I believe the president, Harris Kenny at the time and reviewed a pre-production model that was actually May of 2016. And then fast forward a little bit, this one came to me in March of 2017 to finalize the review. And you remember back when Eric and I were doctors. And nice lab coat. Thanks, you look very professional. Thanks, you as well. <laughs> we talked about the Lulzbot bio in October of 2019. <sighs> those were good days. I remember those days fondly. It's all downhill from here. However, with the Taz 6, I've always really enjoyed using this machine. It's built incredibly well, and I love it. I absolutely love it for the most part. But one of the things that's always got me about this machine is the width and the amount of space that it takes up side to side. No, no, oh help and bother. So it's decent in size, but then you have this control box on the side, which takes up some space here. You have the spool on the side, and then, and then you have to have room to take off the spool on the side. Ugh. So it's always been tough to find a spot for this. And I, I've got some shelves, you can't see them behind the camera there, but uh, it, it works there. Problem is, again, uh, with a shelf, I have limited space going this way, so I have to find a way to move that spool. First, let's talk about this. The spool's over here, right? The spool's on this little arm that extends out, and it can hold a small, regular-sized spool like this. It can hold a five-kilogram spool. And then there's this, this connector right here that the filament travels through this extraordinarily long PTFE tube and then to the extruder. Originally, this machine took 2.85 three millimeter filament. However, what you see right here, that's an ItWorks 3D tool head. So it takes 1.75 millimeter filament and it's got a hardened nozzle so I can print all sorts of crunchy stuff. This whole system was built originally for 285 filament. And while that filament is thicker, more rigid, I don't know if even this system is needed for that sort of filament. So there must be a better way. And there is, thanks to Thingiverse user Derek Sunday, not Derek Monday or Derek Wednesday, Derek Sunday, there is an above machine truss type spool holder for the Lulzbot Taz 6 and Taz 5. Printing it was pretty easy. I used the Raise 3D E2 Plus and I printed both of the trusses at the same time. I printed using Matter Hackers Rhino, which is essentially PETG-ish, it's a copolymer and they printed out incredibly well. Uh, so I used some supports for this little bit on the end and they came off and they, they looked great coming off the machine. And here they are, right here. These are the, the trusses almost that go on the top. So one would go here and one would go here. And then right between them would go a tube and the tube would hold the spool. So then it would kind of sit right up here and it would feed down into the printer. And then look at that. The machine itself now takes less space side to side and I take advantage of more space up above, which I have on my shelf. So this is fantastic. And there's a model for the tube that goes on top that you put through the spool. You know, this is interesting. That tube is 25.4 millimeters in diameter, which uh, is an inch. That is an inch here in the US. So honestly, all I have to do is find uh, a one inch tube. And I happen to have some. In fact, <laughs> I have a lot of it. So this end pops right into there, holds itself in place. And then because of these little pieces right here that fit in right here, it kind of puts tension right there, holds it apart, that's good. So we've got the one inch or 25.4, millimeter diameter PVC pipe. This will hold spools no problem. 
However, the tube that you can print is 158.8 millimeters, which unfortunately my, I can't find my metric tape measure. But you know, according to math, that's roughly six and a quarter inches. And six and a quarter inches will fit across here just fine. Oh yeah. So if I cut this six and a quarter inches long, I can put it here, we can put the spool on the top, we can strike and get rid of, <laughs> God dang it. We can strike and get rid of this Bowden tube and this little holder and this spool holder, and then we'll have a much happier Taz 6 experience. Well, let's get to it. I can't find my handsaw, but I've got this angle grinder. Maybe that'll work. Wait a minute, my sawzall might do it. Wait, wait, no, I have an idea. So we got ourselves a clean cut. Now that's super nice. That, that brand new 96 tooth blade is really gonna do a great job with PVC. I got a little bit left over there and uh, no worry. There we go, look at that. So that little piece right there at the end. Let's go try this on the Taz. Okay, we're back at the Taz 6 and this is our cut piece of PVC. It's gonna go right between here and, oh, there's no click, it just fits. It just fits like that. Here, let's test this. So, spool goes in. Oh, fabulous. Look at that. It just hangs right above the machine. And this is the exact configuration I want. And there's room to put a second one if you have a dual extruder on your TAS 5 or TAS 6. Awesome. You know, something interesting. There's holes here for being able to screw these into some T-nuts. Or there's little channels to put zip ties and who doesn't love zip ties let me go get some and we'll secure this oh. there we go we've upgraded added to changed our 3d printer and made it more usable for us, well, for me, I made it more usable for me. And is it that part of what 3D printing is all about is finding the solutions for the unique problems that you have and making solutions for them. So look at that, fits just great. These hold it just great. If I take that out, put a spool in, rotates just fine. But, uh, but Joel, what about, what about a big spool? Will a big spool fit? This is not a good solution. <laughs> You make a very valid point, weird up-close camera Joel, but honestly, there's no concern to be had. Watch this. There's a giant spool of High Five Blue, just like that. Fits just fine. So here we go. We have a solution for the TAS-6 that really shrinks the space it takes up as far as the dimension that I really care about. And then this can fold up. This Bowden tube can come off, but now, We've got ourselves a sleek, slim down, ready for 2020 or the rest of 2020 anyway, 3D printing machine that should be able to print all the things. This is kind of cool. Honestly, I really love this. Part of, part of what makes 3D printing so, so joyous to me, part of, what, part of what brings me so much joy with 3D printing is either designing custom solutions for problems or finding others with ingenious ideas for solutions to problems. And I thought about designing this all, my, all by myself, right? I thought about loading up Fusion 360 and making some triangles and extruding them that way and then making a spot where I could put a, a dowel or something to spin the spool with. But honestly, I, I mean, I went searching and I found it and Derek Sunday made it and it works beautifully. I love this. It's almost like with this spool holder and this it works 3D tool head, it's almost like this machine is refreshed and renewed and uh, ready to print all the things. I just love it. Well, I got a little personal there, but that's part of what brings me so much joy in this is being able to find those solutions and then seeing others who are able to make those solutions. I love watching videos on this and looking at tweets and finding stuff on Facebook. So if you have any custom, cool, 
awesome solutions for your 3D printer or do you have awesome, cool, wonderful solutions that your 3D printer has made for problems that couldn't be solved any other way? I would love to see those. Please tag me on the Twitters. I'm at Joel Telling. I've got the Facebook page slash 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, I, would, I would love to see everything you have. Throw it at me. I can't wait. If you made it this far, you are awesome. Any excuse to use power tools is a great excuse. Good luck modifying, creating, and solving all the problems that you need to. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Don't give up. And as always, high five. Hey, why don't we do an after the five? <laughs> it's been a while. Man, uh, how is everybody? Right, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back it up a little bit. Back it up. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go. To film this one, I opened up the garage door because it brought in all sorts of natural light. I just kicked a garbage can.